Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the Generic Drugs Forum 2021 Life Cycle of a Generic Drug. I am Sally Choi, Director at the Office of Generic Drugs at USFDA, and I am very honored to open this very special event. And it is hard to believe that this is already second year that we are hosting this Generic Drugs Forum virtually. It is my pleasure that this year I'm sharing the keynote session with Dr. Sao Lee, known as Dr. Larry Lee, the Deputy Director of Science from the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality. As you can see from the two-day agenda of the forum, this year's Generic Drugs Forum contains wonderful speakers and panels covering various areas of the generic drug program, and I hope you enjoy each session. At this event, you will hear practical advice, case studies, and a deep dive into the abbreviated new drug and the, uh, application and the assessment process. Also, other aspects like data integrity, quality management, emerging technology program, post marketing safety, REMS, and global landscape for generic drugs will be presented, and I hope you find them practical and useful. For my portion, I'll go over basics and high level of the generic drug program. More specifically, I'll focus on Office of Generic Drugs mission, vision, and values. Based on our mission, vision, and values, I'll present our efforts in protecting public health and outreach and transparency, and briefly introduce our office's reorganization. In addition, I'll talk about one hot topic area, complex generics, and share what actions we're taking in creating the transparency and value for complex generic products development. First, our mission. OGD ensures high quality, affordable generic drugs are available to the American public. Vision. OGD is the world leader in the science and regulation of generic drugs, serving an essential role in advancing FDA's public health mission. And the values that guide our actions and our interactions with others, and they are accountability, balance, collaboration, dedication, excellence, and foundation of trust and respect. Protecting the public health is the core of our mission and why the people of OGD show up every day, even during a time of unprecedented global challenges and in a full-time virtual setting. Our people remain steadfast in our dedication to seamlessly taking timely actions to assess and approve generic drugs on behalf of American patients and consumers. OGD takes our mission of ensuring that the American public has access to safe, and effective generic medications very seriously, especially now during a time of crisis. Our staff is working at full capacity and we continue to move generic drug applications forward. FDA's generic drug program efforts have helped maintain the supply of medications for our most critically ill patients with COVID-19, including antibiotics, sedatives used in ventilated patients, anticoagulants, and pulmonary medications. We've been working with the generic drug applicants whose development work has been affected by the COVID-19. And we also worked diligently to support manufacturers of our approved generic drug products who need to make changes to a manufacturing process or facility to address disruptions from the COVID-19 pandemic. The generic drug program is in a very healthy state. And the pipeline of generics is strong. FDA has also taken a number of actions under our Drug Competition Action Plan, DCAP, to encourage increased competition and broader access to medical products, particularly in areas of the market where there is currently inadequate generic competition. We continue to take steps under the Generic Drug User Fee Amendments, GRUFA, to improve access to affordable medicines and encourage robust and timely market competition for generic drugs without sacrificing the scientific rigor underlying our generic drug program. OGD helped increase competition by approving 
alternative way approving 948 abbreviated new drug applications. These were relatively consistent numbers compared to recent years and speak to the continued strength of the overall generic drug program. These approvals included 72 first generic drug approvals, which is an impressive number. We also approved 35 generics with a com competitive ge uh, generic therapy, CGT designation, including a quarterly record of 17 CGT approvals in the first quarter of a fiscal year 2020. In addition, we received 121 pre enda meeting requests, and also we responded to a record number of controls from industry, 3,711. This slide focuses on first generic approvals, and once again, OGT helped increase competition by approving 72 first generics. FDA considers first generics to be important to public health and prioritizes the review of these submissions. And you can see some of the notable first generics here. Later, I'll have another slide on notable first complex generic approvals. The GRUFA Regulatory Science Program has a huge public health impact because our mutual work and mutual success starts far earlier than end of submission. Our GRUFA Regulatory Science Program helps clarifying regulatory expectations for prospective applicants early in product development, helping applicants develop more complete submissions, promoting a more efficient and effective review process, and reducing the number of review cycles necessary to obtain and, and the approval of complex products. The FY2020 Gurufa Science and Research Report describes the full scope of Gurufa supported research activities across FDA. In addition to the ENDA assessments and regulatory research work, we are continuously working on various web pages and guidances to increase transparency and improve review efficiency. Some of the notable final guidances that were issued late last year include referencing approved drug products in ENDA submissions, formal meetings between FDA and applicants of complex generic products, and controlled correspondence related to generic drug development. Workshops like this generic drugs forum and the other events we have planned this year are a valuable way for you to interact with FDA and provide us with your input. For example, on May 5th, FDA will be hosting a webinar providing an overview of a product-specific guidances, PSGs, including how they are developed and revised, and their role in facilitating generic drug development and generic drug application assessment. FDA will also discuss ways a prospective and current generic drug applicants can use PSGs, including those for complex products, to improve the efficiency of generic drug development. Also, we'll be hosting a webinar on common labeling deficiencies and tips on May 7th, and a few more workshops are listed here. I'd like to remind you that you can sign up for our listservs to get direct email outreach from us when we have updates. Early this year, OGD received the approval of a reorganization. The light blue boxes and text shown here indicate the newly created Office of Safety and Clinical Evaluation, the divisions that comprise it, new divisions created in other OGD sub-offices, and the inclusion of the quality management system staff in the immediate office. OGD's reorganization is designed to improve efficiency and consistency across OGD, more effectively resource and support the high volume of generic drug applications, and the essential and intricate work performed by the generic drug program, including novel and complex generics. Additionally, we believe this reorganization will promote career opportunities and professional development, increasing the program's ability to retain highly skilled professionals. Now, I'd like to present some of the actions we're taking in the complex generic product area. The reason I decided to present this topic today is because advancing complex generic drug development is an important component of FDA's goals 
of ensuring patients have access to a broad range of potentially cost-saving medicines. And this is a relatively newer and challenging area. I say it is newer because when the Hatch-Waxman Amendments of 1984, which provided a framework for generic drug review was established, most drugs were simple small molecules requiring relatively simple manufacturing processes. These simple small molecule generics can be characterized and evaluated through traditional methods, including traditional bioclones method. In more recent years, science and technology have progressed at a rapid pace leading to submission of ENDAS that contain complex active ingredients, formulations, uh, routes of uh, delivery, dosage forms, and drug device combinations that can be more difficult to develop. And the traditional bioclones method might not apply in evaluating these products. These complex generic applications bring a multitude of novel and complex regulatory, scientific, programmatic, and policy issues not foreseen by the hatch Westman amendments. We recognize these issues, and OGD and the Generic Drug Program are taking a number of new steps to support the development of high-quality applications for complex generic drugs. First, as many of you who are working in the generic area knows, FDA develops product-specific guidance to provide up-to-date scientific advice and make product development and FDA assessment more efficient. Enhance the communications with and transparency to industry through PSGs and guidance documents results in significant improvement in the adequacy of applications and receipt. Therefore, making these PSGs available in timely manner for complex generic drug product is even more important for the success of the program. So we have created these upcoming PSGs for complex generic drug product development webpage which tracks PSGs for complex generic products that FDA plans to issue or revise in the coming year. Helping generic drug develops better plan their generic drug development programs. Also, new or revised PSGs for complex generic products often include innovative in vitro bioclones approaches that are more efficient as compared to clinical endpoint bioequivalent studies that are more costly to conduct because they require requ uh, recruitment of large numbers of patients over a long duration. Our PSG revisions are driven by our science and research investments. I'd like to remind you that you can engage in ideas for guidance development by submitting comments to public dockets and participating in public workshops. Also, FDA has granted 200 plus pre enda meetings since the start of GRUFA 2 2017. And the ENDA program has exceeded its GRUFA goals related to pre enda meetings for complex products. These pre enda meetings better facilitate development and assessment of ENDAs for complex generic products. Another action we have taken in complex generics area that FDA awarded a five-year grant to the University of Maryland and the University of Michigan to establish a Center for Research on Complex Generics, CRCG. The center aims to enhance research collaborations with the generic industry to further the FDA's mission of increasing access to safe and effective generic products. This goal will be pursued through collaborative research training, and exchange of resources between FDA, the generics industry, and stakeholders. This first of its kind cutting edge center will stimulate innovative dialogue, disseminate current understanding of complex products and practices, and generate new knowledge in support of FDA's mission to promote and protect the public health by increasing access to safe and effective generic medicines. The first co-sponsored workshops with the center will be held later this year. Now let's talk about the approvals. First, since 2018, FDA has approved 100 plus complex generics annually. Also, our data shows that the median approval times 
for complex and non-complex products are similar. We attribute this to FDA's focus and commitment to the complex product development program and industry's focus and commitment to developing these products. In this slide, we have some recent notable first complex generic approvals, and I'll mention a couple. On December 28, 2020, we approved the first generic glucagon for injection, and this generic is a synthetic peptide that references a recombinant DNA reference listed drug. This would not have happened without our research on analytical methods for peptides and the research on immunogenicity testing for peptides. A great example of how research turned no into a scientific yes and resulted in a product available in the market. On January 15th, we approved the first generic verumoxtol injection of parenteral iron product and our scientific investment in characterization and advanced biocarbon study designs was essential to this approval. The approval of lotepcrozenol etabonate uh, ophthalmic gel in February this year utilized a new in vitro biocarbon approach. Once again, many of these approvals are the fruit of many years of FDA and industry's focus and commitment to develop these products and we will continue to work hard in making more of these complex generics available to the public. Here's a slide that lists the various sites where you can visit and learn and obtain more information on the OGD and generic drug program. I hope you have a productive meeting and I thank you for your commitment and for inviting me to be here with you today. I look forward to our continuing collaboration so that we can together overcome whatever challenges we face and embrace the many opportunities we have before us in making high quality affordable medicines available to the patients. Thank you.